What do ordinary Russians think of this war in Ukraine? I get asked this question quite often recently, and I do understand why many of my British, German or French friends ask me this question. It is because they know that I grew up in Moscow and spent first 17 years of my life there. When they ask me this question, they want to hear an answer that goes beyond the newspaper headlines. They want to know what do ordinary, regular, day-to-day -day Russians think of this horror that happens in Ukraine. In this video, I try to give my answer to this very difficult question. I think it is going to be an interesting coincidence if the church bells will start ringing exactly when I'll hit the record button on this video. I hope you are all doing well guys and I wanted to begin this video by saying sorry if I'm not going to look at the camera look directly at you during this video. The subject that I'm going to cover is very emotionally difficult one and it came very close to my heart and I'm not that good at looking at the camera during my regular fun videos let alone uh, in, a, in an emotionally charged video such as this. In this video I wanted to address a question that I get asked very often these days and that is what do regular Russians think of this war? And here are the church bells. What do regular Russians think of this war? And uh, this is a very difficult question to give an answer to, mainly because Russia consists of 11 time zones and someone who lives in its south, uh, somewhere like in Chechnya or Dagestan, is very different from someone who lives in St. Petersburg. And someone who lives in St. Petersburg in their turn is very different from someone who lives in Vladivostok, which is in Russia's far east near Japan. It is a very vast and very diverse country and it is hard to give a diagnosis uh, that will cover all of the country. And I do understand we want numbers, we want data, we want polls, something like 51 and a half percent of all Russians are against the war or the other way around. I think it is much more complex and much more nuanced than that. And every case is very different and very often those who vote decide nothing and those who count decide everything. And also those who protest against the war today, they mainly do it on the moral grounds. They are genuinely against the war, while those who will protest tomorrow because of the effects of the economic sanctions is a whole another story. You know, they are going to protest against poverty, in my opinion. In these days, I reminded myself a quote by one of my favorite Russian writers, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who said that the, the line that divides good and evil goes not through social classes, not through cultures or nations, but through each human heart. This is so true because I spoke to one of my friends uh, yesterday and she was so extremely opposed to war and she went on the streets and protested against this war and was almost arrested and two hours later I spoke to another friend of mine and he just refused discussing this issue completely and I don't know how to interpret this. Is this a sign of his support? Is this just fear? My answer to this question mainly is that I'm discovering what do regular Russians think of this war while I speak to my friends, to my family members. That's how I can understand where that line between good and evil goes through, you know, whose heart is inclined more towards evil and whose heart has the courage to be on the side of the good. Those of you who follow me know that I uh, recommend books and I thought I'll keep it up and I'll tell you about one book that I already covered here and it is John Steinbeck's A Russian Journal. In the late 1940s, John Steinbeck and photographer Robert Kappa were witnessing how the American journalism is in a very steep decline. The 
line between fact and opinion was becoming blurry. They really wanted to know what do regular Soviet people think? How do they spend their days? And this was right after the end of the Second World War and the beginning of the Cold War. So the tensions between Soviet Union and United States was very high. They traveled to the Soviet Union to find out what do regular people think there. They visited Moscow, they visited Kiev, they visited Stalingrad and Tbilisi in Georgia, and everywhere they went, all people, whether Russian, Ukrainian, Georgian, whether farmers or government workers, they all asked them just one question. They asked, Mr. Steinmeck, do, does America want war? Do, are we going to see another war? So those people witnessed war with their own eyes. There was a scene when John Steinbeck and Kappa went to a Soviet farm and there they were shocked to discover not that there are no men there, that they couldn't see a single man in those farms. The reason for this was because all, all men died in the front fighting against Germans and those who managed to come back they were forever handicapped. This made me understand the, that the people who witnessed war with their own eyes will never support something like this. For them it is not a uh, an image on the screen. It's not something that you scroll on your iPhone or Android phone. It is not a Netflix show that you can switch off and relax and continue to watch. It is very real and for the women in those Soviet farms, war continued although it ended because all their loved ones, all their husbands, sons never came back. I'm recording this video in a small town of St. Albans, which is 10 minutes away from London. It is very nice and very peaceful here. It is a lovely park. I'll show you in some B-roll fall footage. But all of this that is happening in Ukraine made me realize how privileged we are to live in peace, to be able to sit down calmly on a bench such as this and to peacefully read a book, not being afraid of your life. I started appreciating this when I found out that one of my friends is in a bomb shelter with her two-year-old daughter um, right now in Kiev. And it is a terrible image to imagine, to think of. So I didn't want to leave any morally charged message in this video. I just wanted to share my feelings. I just wanted to document what's happening as of today, 6th of March, and just tell you that, you know, it is important to remind yourself about the privilege of living in peace. Um, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you are all safe. Bye.